Good morning. I'm Mike Voidick. I'm an instructor at Coyne College. I have a couple of students with me. Uh, some friends of one of the students said that they had to keep filling this system. So there's an obvious refrigerant leak. Uh, it's a 22 R22 system. And the uh, student mentioned that it was flat. There was no refrigerant in it at all. So um, this was in May. Right now we're in August. So there's a healthy leak. Um, what we're going to do this morning is show you how we um, look logically for a leak on this. Now, this particular furnace has a humidifier that's a bypass humidifier. You can see that the pad is right here on the supply plenum, but it comes down and goes into the return on the bottom. The, this, this is a standard upflow model with the um, blower motor down in the bottom. And standard during the summer, you have a damper that shuts it off. In the winter time, you open it up, water dribbles through the pad, we have humidification. But during the summer, we don't want that. We don't want to lose that air pressure in here, so we shut this off. All right, so since we have it right here on top of the uh, furnace located right here, we take off the top, take out the pad, is what this is called, the pad. And you can see right inside there is the evaporator coil. Now why do I start here? I went outside. It's a train unit. Um, older trains, I, I think uh, maybe all trains now, they say something like MFD, manufacturing date. Well this one is over 25 years old. And when it's that old, usually, not all the time, I can't say all, but usually the evaporator um, the evaporator develops a leak. Those U-tubes at the end of the evaporator, we're asking the refrigerant to fly around the elbow. So, uh, you can hear, you've been hearing the, the tick on this. Okay, this is an Inficon. The particular model is a DTEC Select. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's expensive. It's probably the most expensive refrigerant sniffer out there. It'll take care of 22 and 410A as well as all the rest. They list them here, 134A, 404A, R12, the old ones. Um, <clears throat> this particular model can sniff up to a tenth of an ounce a year. Very good. There is another model, uh, TIFF has one, that's um, less expensive that does a tenth of an ounce. I can't, I can't give a recommendation or say anything negative about TIFF because I haven't used it. But I know that Inficon, this is a rechargeable battery. Um, they improve on their, their um, technical um, workings, if you will. I had one that was called, this is called the DTEC Select. I had a TechMate beforehand that, that sniffed 24 hundredths of an ounce a year. Um, it got stolen, so I said I'm going for the best, especially with... Um, uh, North Star paying for it, my company at the time paying for it. The the older one, the the, the um, TechMate had a had a sensing tip that had to be replaced each year. This one does not have to be replaced. What it does have, however, is a tip in here that won't let water come in. It's a one shot deal. You say, what's water doing around here? Well, sometimes when you're when you're checking inside a compressor within a condensing unit around the compressor and you'll see that outside when we go sometimes there's some standing water remember this is all negative pressure we are sucking in the atmosphere hopefully I say hopefully contaminated with refrigerant because we want to find the, the leak you're sucking that in you don't want to suck water into the unit so this this will prevent water from being sucked in so I like the technology uh, I've called them for technical assistance no problem with it okay of course, you take out your handy uh, flashlight, and what I what I do is I get in here, and I'll just take my time. I have the customer, by the way, turn off everything when I'm on the way to the the house, or or when when we're um, scheduled to come. I have the service manager or somebody in the office tell them shut off everything. No fan, no cooling, no heating, for that matter. We want the refrigerant to pool wherever it's leaking. And if the fan was blowing, it'd blow the refrigerant all over the place. So we're just taking our time, and I'm going down the line, because if there's a leak, this baby's going to find it. I'm also physically looking 
at the copper in here where I can see it because if there's a refrigerant leak there will be oil there. The oil of course goes along with the refrigerant and if there's a leak there will be oil spotting. I've seen, I've seen oil spots in the middle of an evaporator coil and that, that clued me into something. So we're checking here as, as, as far as we can go. I see something up here. I mean it is 25 years old and many of these evaporators, I didn't say all, but many of the evaporators will have leaks on them. So far so good. Um, and again this is um, the first place. It's so old that this is the first place I would check. Remember that refrigerant is heavier. I should say most refrigerants. The refrigerants that we handle are 22 our 410 are heavier than air, so it would pool probably in the drain pan down here. We can also go, of course, on the other side. So we just take our time. I'm looking at the U-tubes here. I don't see any oil at all. Oh, we have a cat. My cat. Good to have a flashlight handy. I like to carry one in a holster. Surprise it how many times. Once you have a flashlight, how often you use it. Alright, so we're just. I'm not worried about having to be real close to the leak because it's going to pool in here because there's no fan running or anything. I don't get a chirp. This thing, by the way, we didn't tell you this, but. Um, I turn this on outside. You want to do it outside before you come inside the uh, house. And once it starts this regular chirping, then you know it's ready. So that's why it was chirping when I was talking to you at first, when I introduced what we're doing. My point, I don't, we don't have any leak down here. Um, so we're going to go outside and uh, we're going to check the condenser out. 